In the mystical world of compression, there's one algorithm that constantly puzzles developers. Its ability to compress data so well is shrouded in ancient secrets of statistical probability. I'm talking, of course, of arithmetic compression, the de facto statistical compressor that has its hands in every part of the modern compression industry. Everything you see online, from images to videos and even your text data, has been sent through its enchanted algorithm. Writing an arithmetic compressor yourself is no easy task. It requires you to stare into the face of the unknown and accept what it has to tell you. But fear not, young programmer, because I'm here to help. My name is Colt McCandless, and this is Compressor Head. Now, if you remember, variable length codes, or VLCs, take a given symbol from our input stream and assigns a code word to it that has a variable number of bits. Uh, that VLC is then pushed to the output stream, producing a compressed version of our data. The trick is that variable length codes produce compression that's close to entropy, as long as the probability of your symbol distribution matches the probability table that you've built your VLC from. But the trick is that VLCs are generated with a specific set of probabilities in mind. Uh, for example, here, haha, there we go. Let's take a look at omega codes next to even row day codes. You can see that for these two VLC types, they're not equal for every given value of n. This is because of the statistical probabilities that they've made assumptions towards. See, omega codes expect that there's not going to be lots and lots of most probable symbols. Uh, if we end up with a lot of symbols that are close in probability or have a shared probability, then we get into trouble. Omega codes are weighted towards having a dominant symbol with the most probability, while everything else trails off in very small amounts. Even row day codes, on the other hand, expect that the top four symbols are actually pretty close in probability to each other. But once you hit the uh, eighth most probable symbol, the code word size increases dramatically. This expects there to be a grouping of symbols that are pretty close and a drop off after that. As such, you run into a problem. What if the probability distribution of your data stream doesn't match your chosen VLC set? Well, in that case, you get bloat. You'll end up with code words that are not minimal, and as such, your compressed stream won't be equal to entropy. This is the trouble that most folks have with practical implementations of variable length codes. Uh, which VLC do we use for our data that gives us the best compression? I mean, it's not like we can iterate through every VLC and find the best match. I mean, that would just take way too long. Instead, we want some way to encode a stream that optimizes for a probability without having to fit some pre-existing statistical table. And this, my friend, is where arithmetic compression comes in. Jorma Rizzanen published... <laughs> Most standard literature that discusses arithmetic compression puts it a little something like this. <clears throat> In contrast to VLCs, which assign a code word per symbol, arithmetic compression assigns one code word to the entire data stream. Which is elegantly stated, but really doesn't tell us anything. I mean, what kind of code should we actually apply to that stream? If I'm given AZZ as an input, I can really pick any number. I mean, if I make it 12626, two, six, that's cool, right? But that ends up bloating the stream. Or I can make AZZ equals 1, but how would I decompress that later? See, the magic of arithmetic compression is a data transform that is applied to the source data in order to create a single output number, which uses less bits to represent than the source stream itself. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. First, let's talk about binary search. Am I, am I not totally, totally? Let's say I search for the value six in the number range zero to nine. A binary search works by dividing the space in half repeatedly until we find our number. Uh, so effectively, we start with low equals zero and high equals nine, which means the number that we're checking is the five. Now, if six is greater than five, which uh, it is, we erase our low and move it around so that low is now equal to five and we're checking seven. Now, we continue doing this process of subdividing the space in half each iteration until we find the number that we're looking for. But now the question is, what if instead of subdividing our space in half each iteration, we instead subdivided it in thirds, fourths, or uh, sixteenths? Uh, for example, let's subdivide our number space into four parts. And when we choose what section we're looking for, we subdivide that into four parts as well. Uh, this concept of subdividing the space each time we refine our search is the basis for how arithmetic transforms work. Uh, effectively, we assign a subspace 
to each one of our symbols. When we encode the symbol C from our input stream, we subdivide C space further, assigning new symbols to the space in the proper order. And uh, this continues on. Every single input that we grab subdivides the space into smaller and smaller subsections each step, but with one simple modification. Rather than subdividing our search space into equal portions, we subdivide it based on probabilities of the symbols in our stream, uh, kind of like our code word tables. So if C is the most probable symbol, it gets the most space. Now, in order for this to work, we need our number range to be something that makes sense to actually be subdividing. Uh, so I mean, we can't use integers. Instead, we will subdivide our number space and define it existing on the range 0 to 1, and then that allows us to assign each symbol a area on the word space that's equal to its probability. And this right here, my friends, is the starting process of how arithmetic compression works. But enough chit chat. Let's encode something. So let's take an example with three symbols, uh, R, G, and B, with the probabilities of 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1, respectively. Now it's pretty easy, given the probabilities of these values, to assign them ranges on the interval of 0 to 1. Or perhaps there's a better way to look at this in number line form. So let's encode a simple string, G, G, B. First, we pull the symbol G from the input stream. And since the interval of g, according to our table, is 0 0.4 to 0 0.9, we then subdivide our space, giving us the values between 0 0.4 and 0 0.9, respectively, which sets our low and high values, 0 0.4 to uh, 0 0.5999999. G actually ends up being 0 0.6 to 0 0.84999999, and B ends up being 0 0.85 to 0 0.9999999. It's now time to read the second symbol from our stream. It's a G once again. When we read our B value, we subdivide that interval once again. After encoding B, our final interval is now 0 0.825 and 0 0.85. This is the range that we want to output as our encoded value. Now congratulations, you've actually just in arithmetically encoded a stream. Now, decoding can be viewed as the same process, but uh, in reverse. Now, since our final value range is 0 0.825 to 0 0.85, honestly, we can output any value between those two to our encoded stream. So uh, let's just randomly pick a value and say that it's 0 0.8. Three, right? The decoding process can be thought of as drawing a vertical line through our subdivided ranges, updating the intervals as we move down. So if we start with 0 0.83, the symbol for that range that it falls in is the letter G. So we output that as our first symbol. Then we subdivide that space and 0 0.83 once again falls in the G area, which is our second symbol. And finally, 0 0.83 falls in the B range, which is our final symbol. There you go. Encoding and decoding of arithmetic compression, all in one nice package. You good? Remember this guy? Besides inventing a plethora of variable length code patterns, Peter Elias first proposed the concept behind arithmetic compression in the early 1960s. It wasn't until a decade later though, when Jorma Rizanin published some of the first suitable research for its implementation alongside a massive patent. For the next couple decades, arithmetic compression pretty much fell off the map due to an impossibly aggressive patent strategy enforced by IBM at the time. The patent problem was so aggressive and arithmetic compression was so good that a separate coding algorithm called range coding was invented in 1979, which basically did the same thing as arithmetic compression, but was free from patents. Nothing like a good government system to stifle creativity, huh? No, I really don't think uh, this is all really that necessary. I mean, it was just a comment on a video. Just another one. Okay, fine. We, got, you know, we got another signature. Fine. I don't even know what this says. Initial, too. You guys, of course, need an initial. So, really, I think that. And here. You guys need, like, blood samples and hair and everything else, too. Signatures? Just okay. Fine. Listen, I'm very busy. Can I at least get back to all of this? Let me just check. You're going to check it all. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right.
In the early 2000s, though, the patent expired and arithmetic compression took off again, allowing itself to achieve the status of the gold standard for the current generation of statistical encoders. In fact, the majority of modern compression formats for archives, like uh, LZMA and BZIP, audio and video, like uh, JPEG, WebP, WebM, and H.264, all work with an arithmetic compression system as its statistical compression step. <laughs> So here's the tricky part with arithmetic compression. Why the hell does it work? I mean, it's a simple concept, but how does it get us close to entropy? Well, it has everything to do with probability distribution and how we subdivide our space. So let's try to subdivide our space evenly. If we've got 10 values and we subdivide our space between 0.2 and 0.3, we end up with 10 new ranges starting at 0 0.2, 0 0.21, 0 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, and 0.29. Look at what just happened. By subdividing our space, our range values have an increased in size by one digit. If we stopped right now, all of our outputs would be two digits in length. So if we subdivided any of them again, we would end up with three digits per range. And if we divided those region, we'd end up with four digits per range, and uh, so on and so on. Uh, let's, can we, uh, quick. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. Now let's subdivide that space unevenly, and uh, just for the sake of argument, give one range 9 tenths of the space. So we'd end up with the starting spaces of uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.291, uh, 0 0.292, 0 0.293, 0 0.294, 0 0.295, 0 0.296, 0 0.297, 0 0.298, and 0 0.299. Now look at that. Every time we fall in this first range, going from 0 0.2 to 0 0.291, we're outputting less digits to the output stream. Uh, at best, we could simply use the lower bound of 0 0.2, which is less digits than any other starting value in our range. And at best, we don't end up outputting any new digits to our output code at all. Even if we're 10,024 levels deep into the subdivision tree, Picking this first range will output less digits to our output, and at best cases, won't put out any new digits at all. This skewing of unit space based on the probability of the symbol is the core idea that makes arithmetic compression a statistical compressor. Effectively, the more probable the symbol, the less digits it outputs to our encoding. Props. When all the dust settles, arithmetic compression can consistently get close to entropy for arbitrary streams, regardless of the data type or the probability of its symbol distribution. Its single-minded focus makes it a Swiss army knife of statistical compression. But there's a large battle between Huffman and arithmetic in the minds of compression programmers out there. Some claim that the Huffman king is dead! Long live arithmetic compression! while the true believers claim that the king is alive and well, living under the alias dynamic Huffman encoding. But that's for a different episode. My name is Cole McCandless. Thanks for watching.